Penn Institute and Director Giuseppe Yados have cooperated uh, in the organization of this most important and interesting event. Uh, it's important particularly because it's honoring um, a figure such as Marshall McLuhan that uh, can be credited for having changed the way we think about the most important human activity, communication. Um, you may agree, not agree, uh, mention that uh, the famous sentence about the medium is the message uh, was in fact uh, said in a drunken context but never really written down. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you may argue that the global village in fact is not a village but is global. It doesn't matter. The way he uh, thought, taught us to think differently in every dimension of communication and therefore open new avenues of research uh, which continue to blossom every day. And in the way of the great thinkers, he never had real disciples. He simply helped people to think differently. And in fact, Derrida Kerkov, having been the director of the Baruchan Center for many years, is the best example of that. Uh, you, you cannot say that Derrida is Disciple of McLuhan, or for that matter, from anyone, uh, he he will be, will be repudiated for sure. Uh, so it's um, uh, he is a creator in himself, uh, and he continues to create. And that, in that particular sense, I think honoring McLuhan is also honoring creativity and dedication to rigorous thinking and research in the field of communication. Uh, therefore, I'm very happy to be associated with that. Uh, even if the only uh, coherent sentences that I could uh, express would be at the beginning of my talk, and that's why I did it, uh, honoring my look at first, uh, not at the end. Um, now, what I proposed to Derek, and he accepted uh, a year ago, is to talk about what I call the Internet Galaxy. Any resemblance with McLuhan? Uh, but in fact, it's the title of my first little book of the Internet, uh, The Internet Galaxy. Uh, and it, of course, was directly inspired by uh, the Gutenberg Galaxy metaphor that McLuhan proposed. Um, but I added something which is trying to see how uh, Internet has been the vehicle, the platform uh, for cultural change. Um, and uh, because I, I think in an old tradition of technology analysis, um, technology can be considered uh, and analyzed as material culture, meaning that technology is the embodiment of a number of ideas, concepts, projects, values, interests in a particular way of doing things. It was absolutely not evident that the only way to network computers would be the internet protocols. But in fact, there were many different alternative projects. It just happened to be in one particular direction because of the culture and layers of culture that intervene in the production over time of this particular technology that now we all use and that has revolutionized the way we live and we think and we act. Now, um, I think it's uh, particularly important that we meet here today at a moment in which the liberating power of the internet is being expressed a few hundred meters from where we meet. Um, we are living in the midst of something very important in which the internet is playing a major role, not as in user, but as more than facilitator, it would not have happened and it's not happening without the internet. Uh, which is a very vague, vague uh, social movement, which is defined itself by the minute, uh, trying to rethink politics first, but not society at large, and human relations. At the last count, meaning about uh, uh, an hour ago, uh, last time I, I, I woke up, um, 
there are 750 encampments around the world. Um, so there are about 30 in Catalonia, but they are all over the world. Uh, you want to follow by the minute, in real time, that is immediately going to do it because that is a specialty. Uh, go, there are many websites, but the one that I think is most updated at the global level is Yes, We Come. <laughs> so you go into Yes, We Come Net, not com, net, not or net. Yes, We Come Net, and uh, you follow that, and it's by countries, so global, by Spain, and then you get actual pictures and actual people and messages and, and they have brought together Twitter and Facebook and all the social networks in one website that dispatches and receives and processes information all the time. Uh, so, and in that sense, this is the power of the internet. Uh, start with social networks that connect and go from cyberspace to urban space. S starts developing as a challenge to the status order in urban space, located at one particular location, and then from there it spreads, but it spreads while at the same time networking on the internet, and the whole thing feeds back into each other in a global process, which is at the same time global and local. And that's where we, we, we find McLuhan, that it's global and it's local. It's not a global village. It's a global network local villages. But he said enough with, with <laughs> the, the global side of it. So I would like to um, think about the meaning of the communication revolution uh, in a number of ways. First of all, just to remind you that um, communication is, in fact, Conscious, meaningful communication is in fact what, what distinguishes the human species. This is it. If we need one criterion, this is the one. Meaningful and conscious communication. Without communication, we do not exist. It's not simply that. It's not a metaphor. It's a, it's a statement. It's a biological statement. Uh, our brains cannot work without communication. Actually, no brains can work without communication. And in our case, it has to be a specific type of communication that connects and, 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 and links us. And of course, society is communication, social change is communication, life is communication. Now, any major transformation in the technology, organizational environment, and institutional environment of communication changes everything. Right? It doesn't mean that is the origin of the change. It means that we, we cannot be the same if our brains are not the same. And our brains are neural networks connected to environmental networks through communication processes. So any transformation in the overall setup of communication, including therefore the technology of communication, uh, changes everything. However, we don't know how. <laughs> That's a little problem. Uh, since we already know about 2% according to what Damasio tells me, 2% of what happens in the brain, we understand. Imagine if in addition we say the brain in connection to co communication networks at the electronic level and the internet, etc., etc. For, uh, for a long time, Damasio and I have been trying to think about uh, having an analysis that uh, studies how the internet interacts with, with uh, our brain. Well, we know very little about the brain and not too much more about the internet, more than about the brain, yes. But they got the interaction, really nothing at this point, really nothing. But that's a great frontier of research for all the new generations of researchers that, uh, that are there. Now, but we know something. We know something about uh, communication, that, uh, about transformation of communication, that computer networking, in particular the internet, the internet more than the web, the internet um, is absolutely essential in everything we already do. We don't know exactly how it works in the brain, but we know very well how it works in society, we know very well how it works in, in business, in culture, and we start to know uh, how it works in uh, politics. We know that the, the internet is a technology of freedom. To mention another of the godfathers of this field, he held the solar pool, uh, and but 
we also know that as all technologies, internet is a cultural production. And a cultural production of freedom. In which the notion of freedom was embodied in the way the internet was designed. Um, let me just remind you uh, something about the expansion of the internet before going into the more uh, sociological aspect of the of the lecture. Um, the internet is a is a relatively old technology. I mean, it depends how you label old. Uh, from the point of view of Mireya Fernandez, is very old. Uh, from my point, it's well, kind of oldish, but uh, uh, as we know, internet was first deployed in, in, in 1969. So already has been around for 42 years. I would say it's relatively old technology, right? At the, at the level of, of, of change uh, where things go uh, these days. Um, but what happened is that um, from the 1990s, mid-1990s onwards, it increased exponentially. Let me give you a couple of numbers. The first um, study about uh, uh, internet users in the world was in 1996. They were about 40 million users. Um, today, there are 2.2 billion users. But the most important thing is that for a while, uh, in, the early, in the late 1990s, the internet uh, expansion was slowed down in, in uh, the so-called developing countries. I say so-called, or not. They are developing like crazy. And uh, I think that the, the, the underdeveloping countries are ours, and China is the developing uh, one. Um, they slowed down for one simple reason. There were no more landlines. Everything was um, uh, wireless communication. Since, 19, sorry, since 2002, uh, wireless communication overtook the planet uh, landlines communication as uh, the, the prevalent technology of telephony. And therefore, internet had to expand and is expanding on a wireless platform, which required many different things, not only infrastructure, but also the design. Uh, we have to shift from the TCP IP protocol to the IPv6 protocol, which has been more or less uh, uh, re been redesigned many times and still not, not all the problems have been solved, but at least now there is some uh, powerful technology of the 4G uh, when for many, for a long time the 3G was not even working. Um, now, and that's why it's so critical, because wireless communication literally has exploded in the world. The latest data on that is that we have at this point 5.3 billion subscribers, numbers, <coughs> not devices, not, not devices, subscribers, numbers in the planet, 5.3 billion, uh, which basically, with a conservative multiplicative factor and an understanding that children up to five years old don't have their personal number, at, at five, everybody has, uh, but, <laughs> but up to five, not yet, not yet. Um, <coughs> And, and counting that not everybody is like the Argentinians, the, the rate of penetration is 122%. Um, so people in Argentina go with, with, two, with two, two uh, mobile phones in, in each car, you know, like four. Um, counting on that, we basically have a planet that at least at 80% is connected. Connected in different ways, with broadband being much more restricted, uh, with many more complications, uh, but it is connected. And therefore, through the wireless platform, now the internet <coughs> is expanding fast. And therefore, not only the connection of people, but the connection of activities and everything. Now, this is important, uh, not only uh, quantitatively, but qualitatively. Why? Because remember, the, the famous Metcalfe law, in terms of the value of the network, it grows exponentially with the number of nodes added to the network. So it's not simply that you have more, it's that by having more, the value increases in terms of the interactions and the uh, synergy that it generates.